Usually when I talk about anime, I'm praising writers or industry veterans because of how much they respect their fans, love the work they do in the industry, and most importantly, they know what fans want unlike the western world of entertainment. Hollywood is laser focused on shoving political narratives into work, then they end up losing sight of what people really want to watch, and a lot of people in the entertainment industry have gone woke, always focusing on what they can shove into people's faces instead of creating a good story itself. But today's video is pretty different because a director of a new anime movie is coming out basically admitting that he wants to see the end of fan service in anime because too much in the industry is brushed off as freedom of expression. I mainly want to read this article, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or supporting via memberships. All of the links are in the description. And of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So I'm using an archive of this article, but it says in Japan's anime universe, Belle seeks to rewrite script on female power. So in her life in Japan, Suzu is a freckled and shy 17-year-old who is self-conscious about her looks and has lost her will to play music after her mom's death. But in the virtual world known as you, she transforms into Belle, an enchanting global pop superstar with flowing pink hair and a mesmerizing facial design that resembles freckles. The animated film Belle, a hit in Japan that will make its U.S. debut at the New York Film Festival on September 25th, also carries a bit of artistic rebellion. I actually heard about this a couple of months ago and was pretty intrigued. I was planning on watching this when it eventually came out. I thought that it sounded kind of interesting, but after this interview, I'm gonna be honest, I'm much less interested in it now. The film's message of female empowerment has gained attention for flipping the script on anime, Japan's signature style of animated movies and graphic novels that often portrays girls and women as weak, vacuous, and hypersexualized. Anime, yes, has a lot of fan service for sure, but portraying women as weak or empty-headed? No freaking way. Most of the women I've seen in anime have been super intelligent and strong-willed. There is plenty of anime where the lead characters are females, and just because some of them might be in skimpy outfits doesn't mean they're weak or unintelligent. I hate that argument, and we see it with Hollywood. It's like people think attractive women that show off what they've got means they can't be strong, which definitely isn't true. Are you trying to tell me Merlin from The Seven Deadly Sins is a weak, or Akame from Akame Ga Kill is dumb? No, these characters are not that at all. There are so many amazing female characters in anime. I don't know where this statement is coming from. I truly don't. It says the message has resonated in Japan during a time when growing numbers of women are calling for change. Most recently laid bare through a string of sexist comments by high-ranking Olympic officials that drew fierce backlash. Yes, there has definitely been some unfortunate isolated incidents of Japanese officials making comments about women, but this seems like a gross over-exaggeration. Cases of exploitation are happening today no more or less than they've ever happened, but this article latches onto these few instances that came out of the Olympics, trying to say this is the norm when there's no proof of that. It says, I feel that women characters in Japanese anime are often depicted through a lens of desire leading to their sexual exploitation, and too much is brushed off as a freedom of expression, the director of this film said. I want to read this, um, you know, next section first, and then I'll kind of give my whole argument because there's a lot here that I want to address at once. It says, from Disney princesses to Marvel superheroes, from anime to pop music, creators across genres are rethinking how to portray women and girls with agency and dignity and show that being imperfect is beautiful too. 
Hasoda said he hopes to draw attention to the ways that Japanese animation has shaped the public's perceptions of women and girls and what it means to be beautiful and powerful. Such exploitation has been justified with the notion that it's happening in a fantasy world and not in reality, but I feel that surely such perceptions are connected and will influence our reality, he added. First of all, we're talking about fictional characters and fictional worlds here, but if violence and sex in anime made people dangerous and do things they're seeing on TV, if watching highly sexual content made men go out and attack women or pick up a sword and slash someone's arm off, we'd have a literal epidemics of problems going on. Yeah, violence and assault do exist, but we'd literally have everyone running around killing and assaulting each other. There's never been a direct link Proven and evidence that's been used has always turned out to be false and a substantial inflation of reality. A lot of anime is the emphasis and over-exaggeration of lots of human characteristics, not just sexualization. When we watch action movies like Die Hard or Commando, those aren't anime, but they're over-exaggerations of what the human condition can do. We've always done this for entertainment, so why is anime being targeted as anything different? A a lot of these ideas were summarized in feminist Naomi Wolf's book The Beauty Myth from 1990 that basically claimed depictions of women in movies and marketing were toxic and harmful towards women's mental health. Again, the evidence she presented over the years was shown to be false or inflated as well. And this article also completely drops the ball on bringing up male characters. They're only looking at female characters because, of course, that's the hot-button topic, and if they did look at males, they'd see many types of sexual characteristics also represented in male anime characters, like gigantic muscles, being super strong, wearing no shirts. In a lot of ways, they're taking feminine attributes in characters and calling them hypersexualized while treating very masculine characters characteristics as normal. But scrolling down, it says, problematic female representation in anime, especially in television shows aimed at men, has been a concern for gender equality advocates. Such depictions are both overt, exaggerated breasts and barely clothed girls, and subtle, such as storylines in which girls are damsels in distress and secondary to boys. What's wrong with stories where women are damsels in distress? You're telling me they're problematic, but not telling me why they are. Stories with damsels in distress have existed for all of human mythology and some of them are pretty wholesome, like Snow White. In recent years, directors such as Hisoda have sought to challenge views in Japanese society that can devalue women, said Akiko Sugawa, professor at a Japanese national university specializing in gender and anime studies. Anime has the power to create and break gender stereotypes, she said. Sugawa said there also is still much room for improvement, including the need for more women and LGBTQ anime directors. There are now more positive portrayals of LGBTQ characters, issues and works that pose questions about societal problems. And with the rise of more diverse directors and anime decision makers, there's hope for more change to come, she said. Giving LGBTQ characters more shows and representation is a great thing. It's creating more media for more people, but I don't think anime was ever against LGBTQ characters or people at all. There's been gender-fluid characters in anime forever now, and if more LGBTQ creators want to come forward and make more of that anime and manga and create good stories, I think all of us in the anime community will definitely welcome them. It says towards the end of the article, on social media, Japanese fans have raved about the movie's positive message, stunning visuals, and catchy tunes. I, um, like I had said, it says... It says towards the end of the article, on social media, Japanese fans have raved about the movie's positive message, stunning visuals, and catchy tunes, and again, this movie initially caught my eye as well. I thought that it looked pretty good, the trailer for it was pretty good, I was initially pretty interested in it, because it's a modern twist on Disney's Beauty and the Beast, but I think a lot of people like this are either speaking from emotion, or they're just saying what they think people want to hear by looking at what's said on social media, 
And that's freedom of speech, but in the end, they're speaking from emotion and not science or facts. Plenty of females in anime are strong and smart, so why do we need to rewrite the Japanese anime scene and how women are portrayed? But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.